is the answer key from Melham's Math 222, exam number two. And number one, start with the basic square root function. Then square root of x plus three moves the graph three units to the left. The negative of that negative radical x plus three is just a reflection across the x-axis of this graph. And then negative radical x plus three minus one takes this graph and shifts it down one unit. So the point originally was zero, zero, it's now negative three and negative one. Number two, we have x minus one squared minus four in the original. So you take the original y equals x squared and move it one to the right and four down. So the vertex is one negative four. And it looks like so. So that's the original f. And then for the absolute value of f, anything that was above the x-axis, namely this piece, and this piece stayed the same. This part that was below the x-axis gets reflected above the x-axis. So I will trace the actual graph for you in red here, like that and like that. Number three, find the domain of g minus f. So here's g minus f. This thing has to be greater than or equal to zero. And this thing has to be greater than or equal to zero. So x is greater than or equal to three and x is greater than or equal to negative two. Both of these combined into just x is greater than or equal to three. So the domain is bracket three infinity. Number four, we got a problem just like that in the homework. What's the difference between f of x equals x squared minus one over x minus one and x plus one? Well, we can factor into x plus one, x minus one over x minus one. That gives us x plus one, which is the same as the other function, g, but in the original, x is not allowed to be one. So we just want to say f of one does not exist, g and e, but g of one does exist. You can plug in one to the g function, but you cannot plug in one to the f function. Okay, question five asks for f of g of three. So that means first you do g of three. So with g of three, put a three right here. Three squared is nine. Nine plus three is 12, all right? So that means you're now doing f of 12. So 12 goes into the f function right there. 3 times 12 minus 2, 36 minus 2, which is 34. 6 asks for f of g of x. So that's f of 2x squared plus 1. 2x squared plus 1 goes in place for the function f, which is 4 times whatever you give it minus 5. So four times whatever you give it, two x squared plus one minus five. That's eight x squared plus four minus five, or eight x squared minus one. Seven, determine the domain of f of g of x. <clears throat> so f of g of x is f of x minus four. That goes into the square root function. So square root of two parentheses x minus four minus six. That's two x minus eight minus six, which is two x minus 14. Find a domain, you set that to be greater than or equal to zero, a little bit of algebra, x is greater than or equal to seven, or bracket seven infinity. Number eight, ask to graph a function which is not one to one. There are infinitely many possibilities. You just need to draw something which passes the vertical line test, but not the horizontal line test. So a parabola would be such an example. Okay, so it's a function, but not one to one. Number nine, f inverse of six. <clears throat> means you don't plug in six to x, you plug in six for y. Where's y? y is all this. So y equals three x minus 10 and put a six over here. So six equals three x minus 10, add 10, 16 equals three x, divide by three, x equals 16 over three. Finally 10, f of x equals x cubed minus two, call it y equals x cubed minus two. <coughs> Switch around x and y x equals y cubed minus two, add two, x plus two equals y cubed, take the cube root, so y equals f inverse of s, which is the cube root of x plus two. Graph them on the same set of axes, take your basic x cubed function, which goes through the origin, and shove it down two units, 
So that gives me the point zero comma negative two. General cubic function looks like that. And this one, your basic Q root function goes something like so. And if you replace x with x plus two, that moves it two to the left. So negative two, zero. And then I draw my basic Q root function. So there's f and there's f inverse. If you wanted to, you could also draw the line y equals x, which gives you the image right over there. All right, so this is math 222, exam two, answer 